I figure it. Another thousand dollars and she'll be ready for Indianapolis. I wouldn't give you another buck and a half. But, Reno, this is the fastest iron in the business. How many years have you been taking this pile of junk to the race, Red? Six? Seven? Eight. And you never even qualified. No, but we... We broke a steering knuckle last year. And the year before? Hey, Red. Huh? You think this is enough clearance? Well, I'd give it a couple of thousand more. Thanks. Tell you what it'll do, Red. I'll buy the garage. Yeah, but what do you want with the garage? You already got the racetrack and the two best cars. But the cars aren't mine. They belong to my daughter. Yeah, I know. So the other owners can't score for the association that you're winning on your own first. Hey, Reno! <laughs> <laughs> Did you see me get fouled up yesterday? <laughs> yeah, tough luck, Happy. <laughs> man, man, I was way out in front when this little old engine soured out. <laughs> hey, Red, take a look at one of those plugs. <laughs> Well, it looks like your mixture is too lean. <laughs> yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> I'll make a deal, Reno. Yeah? Another thousand now, and I'll take care of your cars for a year. Not a chance. Okay, then you better find yourself another mechanic for number one. Hey, wait a minute, you don't want to throw good money away. I'll take care of Flagel's car instead. Hey, you can't do that to me. I got a mortgage on this place. You know what you can do with it, don't you? Howdy. Yeah? Which one of you guys is Red Stanley? Right there. Over there. Uh-huh. Uh, can you use a first-rate mechanic around here? Like who? Like me. Oh, you're good, are you? Oh, I hate to brag, but I'm about the best there is. Maybe better hire this kid to take my place, Reno. Maybe I better let you have that $1,000. And uh, now you're talking. Sorry about the job, kid. I need another mechanic like I need a hole in my gas tank. How do you like that? A picture of my father. Must have been taken a long time ago. Hey. What's your name? Coy, Billy Coy. Cannonball Coy's kid. Yeah, huh? that's right. That's my father. I was with him in Indianapolis. I know. That's why I came down here to see you. Well, maybe you know I was sitting next to him when it happened. Uh, that was back in the days when they used to carry a mechanic, huh? Uh-huh. Right on the north turret. Less than a left to go. Yeah, I know. Oh, he sure was a great driver, though, wasn't he? Uh-huh. I hope someday I can be just half as good. I have to be good, kid. Oh, I know that. What happened to her? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, where is she? What happened to who? Mary. Uh, I mean, your mother. Oh, she's here. She's with me. Are you in town? Yeah, we got in this morning. Oh. <laughs> hey, I can find you some kind of a job, kid. Well, that's great of you, Red. I haven't seen her for 17 years. I'll bet she's still a fine-looking woman. Oh, yeah, she's fine. Uh-huh. Well, how's she feeling? Good. Say, uh, listen, Red, when do you want me to, uh, when can I start to work? Uh, oh, any time now. Right away, get yourself some overalls. Hey, you kid, uh, to get back to your mother. Oh, would you like to... See her sometime? Uh, yeah, I sure would. Uh, now that you mention it. Well, well why, why don't you come over uh, tonight? Yeah. yeah. Why don't I? I don't know. Why don't you? <laughs> and what I said to you goes. All right, Romeo. I'll send you a check in the morning. <laughs> say, uh, say, Mac, where can I find a curtain? You're a girl, aren't you? Yeah, and take it easy on the curtain. Well, look, all I want to do is find out where I can get a pair of overalls. <laughs> well, there's a locker over by the washroom. You might find some there. Well, I wouldn't have, uh, if I'd known you were a girl, I wouldn't have, <laughs> you know, this. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Why don't you stop knocking yourself out and help me put this wheel on? What wheel? What do you think this is, 10? Oh, oh, uh, sure. Take it easy around the curves. <laughs> hey, Billy, lock this door when you leave. Yeah, I'll do that little thing, Red. See you tonight. Nice, baby. <laughs> <laughs> 
night, Bill. Nothing. What are you doing in my car? Nothing. Well, get out of it and stay out. My, it's nice to see you again. Come on in. You haven't changed a bit. I'll take your hat. I'll take oh. your hat. I just thought I'd bring... I mean, you used to, to like peppermints. Oh, oh, I see. Chocolate covered. You remember it. Have one. Huh? Oh. Don't be so frightened, Arthur. I'm not a young girl anymore. I'm a worn-out, middle-aged woman. You still look good to me, Mary. I'll put your hat away. Uh, oh, yes, you. Sit down. Thanks. Have some candy. Hiya, Mom. I got news for you. I'm a working man. Oh, Vinny, sure. All I have to do is mention Cannibal's name and Red gave me a job just like that. Oh, Vinny, that's right. I guess I'm just a lucky guy. Not everybody had a father like him, huh, Mom? I guess not. Either. Oh, Mrs. Coy. Mrs. Coy, what is this between you and... Hello, Red. Oh, Billy. Oh, don't give me that surprise routine. You should have seen the look on his kisser when he was talking about you. Oh, what a schmo. Haven't seen her in 17 years. You're still a good-looking woman, huh? Oh, I'll bet he thought you were the belle of the ball, huh? Oh, Billy, may I have the next waltz? <laughs> Billy. And then along came Cannonball, bashful schmo, and the rest of these guys had to jump right out of the window because Cannonball was a champion. Billy, still a champion. But nothing. Look, he'll be here any minute now. I'll bet he'll have a box of chocolates in the one arm and his hat in the other, and I bet he won't know which is which. Billy, <laughs> we have company. Oh, hiya. Uh, hiya, Red. Hi. Don't be formal. Just call me Schmo. <laughs> well, I, I, I knew you were there all the time. <laughs> Didn't I, Mom? I knew he was there. I don't think so, dear. <laughs> How do you like that? Can't even trust your own mother. I think you ought to apologize. That's all right, Mary. I insist. You apologize to Schmo. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me, will you, Red? Sure. Forgive us? All right. Can I have one of your candies? Uh-huh. Mm. Peppermint. Say, uh, who's this guy? What was this guy, Vic something or other? What's he got to do with driving those number one cars? Vic Sullivan? Yeah, Red. Well, he drives them. Was he any good? High point man of the midgets this year. Wait till I get a hold of one of those little jobs. I'll drive his ears off. Say, you don't know a guy with a hot iron that needs a good chauffeur, do you? Yeah, but... Do any racing? Did you ever see that little job of mine? Yeah, I noticed you had one. Well, I'd beat everything up in Idaho. Did you ever drive it on a regular racetrack? Regular racetrack? Not exactly. Oh, it's a little different. How can it be a little different? If I never get the chance... Suppose we change the subject. I'm never going to change the subject, Mom. Maybe you like working in a cannery, but I don't like to see you do it. I don't like to see you wear the same dress for five years. If I wanted to stay poor, I'd have stayed in Idaho. I want to make dough, real dough. Not the kind you get from clerking in a grocery store. Look, kid. There's only a few shoppers making any money on this record. And there's hundreds of kids already shooting for the eight or ten jobs that really pay off. Red, I don't care if they're a thousand. They get in front of me and I'll drive right over. Billy, put a shirt on. Now, wait a minute. What? Don't hit me, will you? Please, Mom. Please, I'm ten... Oh. Don't speak to your mother that way. Take it easy, will you, Red? Going around the curves? <laughs> I'm welcoming you to Carroll Speedway, the mighty hot rods of America out here this evening, and you're going to see plenty of grand activity. We might mention at the present time the cars are preparing to go into their time trials. Each car is given three laps in order to obtain its best time. And then those cars will be placed in the uh, racing races. They made this into a real racing buggy, huh? Uh-huh. Now look, if you turn over, scrunch down and pull your head in. Don't worry about me, but thanks for the advice. I'll drive in one of these hot rods as kid stuff. I'll win myself a couple of three races and wait and see one of those guys will be after me to drive one of those big cars. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Coy. On the track. 
What's the difference? I lost, didn't I? Yeah. Well, I just wanted you to know I was sorry you didn't win. Thanks, buddy. That's all right. If you want to know, I... I took the turn too low. Oh. Wait until next time. I'll run those guys right off the track. Sure you will. I'll have that iron of mine running just like an offie if I... Hey, you gonna be busy Saturday night? Uh-uh. Will you meet me in front of Red's at 8 o'clock? Uh-huh. It's a date? It's a date. Eight o'clock. Okay. Um, I'd like to see Mr. Stanley. Who? Arthur Stanley. Well, he don't work here. Why, he, uh, he's the owner of the place. Oh, you mean the boss? Hey, Red. Oh, Mary. Could I speak to you a moment, Arthur? Sure, come in, come in. Come in, Mary. Well, this well, is a surprise. Come on, sit down. Passing, Arthur. And I'm... Sure, anytime. I want to speak to you about Billy. You huh? helped him rebuild his hot rod into a racing car, didn't you? Uh, yes, Mary, but... And then his very first race, he had an accident. He could have been killed. But look, Mary... You're encouraging him, aren't you? If he's going to race anyway, I don't want him to be killed because some dumb mechanic forgets to fasten a bolt. What is there about racing that you can't resist? 
Why do you want to risk your lives? Time after time after time, you or Billy or anybody else. Well, I guess it's for the same reason that men hunt gold and drill for oil wells. It's like Billy says. It's a chance to hit the jackpot. Look at those cups up there. And the big one is filled with $100 bills. Now, if you can win the 500 in Indianapolis, you can get rich. <sighs> well, why should I drive for 30% of the purse when every other chauffeur on the track is getting 40? And you make more money than any of them. Well, it figures. I'm the best driver. Mm -hmm. I give you the fastest car. Yep. Mr. Riley, your daughter's here. Send her in. Hello, baby. Hi, Dad. <laughs> Dad, I need some money. I need a lot of money. Well, well, what's on your mind? Want to buy yourself a hot rod? No. Uh, are you two through talking? Don't worry about him. Go ahead, speak up. Well, I, uh... Dad, I want to buy a dress. A dress? You? You must be kidding. No, I'm not. I think it's about time I had one. Baby, if that's what you want, okay. How much is the dress going to cost? Well, gee, I, I don't know exactly. Twenty, thirty dollars, maybe? You could shop around. There's a lot of sales. You might even get one for 15 or less. Listen, if my girl's going to get a dress, she's going to get a good one. Here's a hundred bucks. Oh, thanks, Dan. Thanks a lot. Now, wait a minute, Lou. What's the matter, Dad? The hair. Thanks, Dad. I wish you could be that generous with me. You'd look nice in a dress. <laughs> well, I'll be busted. Surprise, Mitty? What do you do with all that paint on your face? Paint up black and Indian. And what do you do with that thing on? I have a date tonight. A date? With a boy? Sure. I'd like the things I bought. Two dresses. What are you squandering all your money on dressing for me? You got a closet full of clothes. Oh, I haven't got anything at all. You haven't got anything? Why, you got more pretty things in there than both boys your age. What's the matter with you, Minnie? A girl can't go around wearing things like that on her first date. And you just take this thing back to the burlesque show where you got it. Will you please unpack my shoes, Minnie? My, these sure are pretty, Miss Lou. That boyfriend of yours sure must be something. He's wonderful. He'd have to be to make my baby wear things like this. Zip me up, please. Uh, is he tall? Mm hmm Not exactly. Medium? Uh, no. Well, what does he look like? <laughs> well, you'll like him, man. He's kind of a... Well, he's kind of a short Gary Cooper. He's really very handsome. He has icy blue eyes and firm jaw and high intelligent forehead, and he, he looks like Gary Cooper, James Mason, and Charles Boyer all rolled into one. Uh-huh, but what does he look like when you unroll him? How about it, girl? Vinny, where's my daughter? There she is, Mr. Reno. A combination of Ingrid Crawford and Bergdorf Goodman all rolled into one. <laughs> well, stand up, honey. Let me get a good look at you. Oh, Daddy, I can't walk in these things. Of course you can walk, darling. Sure you can walk. There's nothing to it. I've been wearing these high-heeled cowboy boots for years. But I just know I'm going to fall. You won't fall, darling. Now, look at here. Listen to me. There's nothing to this. All you do is just put your weight forward on your toes. See? Lean forward. Bend your knees slightly. And when you feel a pain in the small of your back, then you're walking comfortably. See, nothing to it. Look. <laughs> Come on, now, let me see it. Come on. That's it. You made it. That's my baby. Now, I've got something special for you. Look at that. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> That's for being such a very nice father. Thank you, baby. Now, help me put it on, because you know what? What? I have a great big date tonight. Well... Well, that don't beat all. When she was five years old, she was playing football and driving a racing car. And now, she's 19 years old and just learned how to walk. 
You had a rough trip. Well, you're, uh, you're all dressed up. <laughs> it's just a little thing I had around the house. Would you like to take the car? Well, I, I wasn't planning on this. But, oh, careful. I mean, I wasn't planning on you being all, uh, all dolled up or anything. Well, a girl can't go around in jeans all the time, can she? No. Me, the way I'm dressed and you, I wasn't planning on going dinner dancing or anything. We don't have to. Why don't we take a ride? A ride? Look, Bud. To tell the truth, I... remember those two special carburetors that you showed me the other day? The ones I was working on? Yeah. Well, I thought that maybe I'd get rid of my two old carbs and put those two specials in tonight, and that's what I thought we'd do, right? Oh, well, sure. Sure. Well, of course, we don't have to do it tonight. We, Or you could show me where they are, and I could... Well, sure, I'll show you where they are. Uh, you don't mind? Not at all. Oh, well, that's swell. I, don't, oh, I, I mean, if, if, if I'd have known that you would, were dressed the way you are, I, I'd have gotten dressed, too. We'd have done something what you wanted us to do. I figure she's geared just right. Hey, Deacon, I hear you're looking for a chauffeur. I was looking for one. Uh, well, looks like you're running in a little bit of luck because I won the main at Carroll last week, you know. Hot rods? Well, why don't you shut your mouth? Why don't you stay in your own league, nuthead? Sorry, kid, I signed Happy Lee this morning. Happy Lee? Oh, well, he's, he's a swell driver, Deacon. You got a good boy. Thanks, anyway. So long, nuthead. So long, phony. You want a little rich on the outside? Sure. <sighs> Hiya, kid. Hi, Hap. Hello, Eddie. Here, you got yourself a ride. <laughs> Gonna make little old four bits here run like a buck and a quarter. <laughs> Anybody can do it. You're the guy. Hey, I know where you can get yourself a ride, too. Yeah? Where? It's a hoodoo wagon. A hoodoo wagon? What do you mean? It means it's a green car. Oh. Oh. See, a driver won't touch a green car. Yeah, I know. The guy drove one in a big race at Indianapolis. Had his iron out in front for 490 miles in less than a minute to go. You know what he did? Put it through a wall and got himself killed. I've sort of heard about green cars yeah, before. Yeah, Eddie, I know all about it. Well, this guy was a real big shot back in those days. Maybe you remember him. His name was, uh, uh, what was his name, Ed? His name was, uh... Cannonball Coy. That's it, Cannonball Coy. <laughs> if you're interested, he... He was my father. Surprise? Well, I thought I'd come over and listen to the radio, if you don't mind. Well, of course I don't mind. Come on, sit down. I'll turn it on for you. Thanks. Any particular station? Yeah, turn it on at 980. 980. 980. Good evening, sports fans. Here we are at the world's fastest quarter-mile dirt track, Cold for City, home of the mighty Vision. They're broadcasting the auto races. Oh, Arthur, I don't want to hear them. Well, you want to hear this one, Mary. The boy's driving. Uh, George phoned me from the track. He thought I'd like to listen to it. And here they come in the last qualifying heat in six laps for the sixth fastest car. On the pole is the track record holder, Lou Riley's number one junior, with six Sullivan at the wheel. And on the outside is Billy Coy in Pets Green's number 73, the Hoodoo Way. This is Billy Coy's first time out in the midget. Tonight he's defying the best known racing superstition. Get away from me with that Hoodoo Wagon! I'll run you into the fence! You get in my way and I'll drive right over you. Here they 
it comes out wheel to wheel down to the starting line. The starter man has got to bring the flag ready to give him the green light. And they're off. Go. that's crashed out there. It's Billy Corey in the hoodoo wagon. Oh, God, not again. Take it easy. The yellow flag right. is up. That's the caution signal. The drivers are slowing down. We're still waiting here tensely. Everybody is tense. Oh, God, not Billy, too. The pit crews are swarming across the track. They're running toward the wrecked car. Well, now, there's the driver. He's out of the car and on his feet. He signals the crowd he's okay. Oh, Arthur. He's safe. He's safe? Sure, he's safe. He's gonna have a job in life, that kid. Take it from me. You just leave it to me. Hiya, Billy. That was a dirty trick. Yeah, yeah. You see me run that hoodoo car through the fence? I sure did. Get him, Billy. Slug him. Get in that chair. Keep that right hand up. Now you. No, no, the left, the left. Keep the left up. That's it. Now you got him. Oh. Wow. All right, cut it out. Cut it out. Break it up here, you two. Break it up. Somebody grab him there. What is it with you two guys? Uh, you try to run me through the rail again, and I'll kill you. What's the matter? Can't you take it in that head? Uh, stop it, you two. I'll have you both barred. Crisp, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody need a doctor? Yeah, I do. Smart young man here decided to put his hand on a red hot exhaust pipe. Boy, and am I burned up. <laughs> wow. How about it, Doc? And like this, you'll be able to drive in about a week. All right, I'll quit for the night. Right after the main event. <laughs> you'll quit right now. Oh, listen, Doc, the car's already qualified. The driver's disqualified by me. <laughs> and that's official. Well, who am I going to get to drive my car? Not my worry. Well, how about me, Deacon? You? Sure. Not on your neck. I got 6,000 bucks tied up in old four bits, and I'm not gonna let any green kid take her out and put her through a fence. Oh, he's all right, Deke. He beat me twice in a hot rod. Three times. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Oh, give me a chance, will you, Deacon? Let me show you what I can do. All right. <laughs> I quit this morning. 
Oh, you're going to quit working for a living, huh? A guy's a sucker to work eight hours a day for mechanics' wages. Say, you got something there. Well, I make more win in one race than I do around here all month. Yeah, but you might not win another in a year. You haven't even got a car to drive. That's what you think. You know that new iron the Deacon Jones is building? Six bits? Yeah, well, Happy's going to drive that, and I'm going to take over number 50. Hey, look, do me a favor, will you? Mm -hmm. Drive the car a few weeks to make sure before you quit your job. <laughs> Perhaps suppose you do me a favor and let me make my own mistakes. Huh? Sure, go ahead and make them. You got my permission. You want to smoke? No, thank you. <laughs> hi, Billy. Hey, hi, bud. Uh, you, you're going to ride four bits. Yeah, that's right. Well, would you like to put this on your helmet? Who is it? Oh, half a dollar. Four bits, I get it. That's cute. Yeah, I thought you might like to have a luck charm, but we'll just try to keep you out of danger. Thanks. What you got in the box? New hat, won't fit? Yeah. Got it today. Yeah, just bought it. How do you like it? <laughs> That's a hat. Look, I gotta get going out. See you later, huh? Kiss you till your heart so happy you could cry, K K K And if you pop the question to me, do you drive me insane? Que bueno, si si. Such a treat to the eye. Que bueno. Ay, que bueno. Look at you, it's just for to sigh. Que bueno. Que bueno. You've got a warm and lovable smile. Could... You got a table for me, please? What is your name? I'm Alexander I'm Hamilton. I'm sorry, I have no Hamilton here. Well, I have a Hamilton here. Well, Mr. Hamilton, I have your table right at ringside. Right this way, please. Kiss you till your heart so happy you could cry. Que, que, que bueno. Ay, que bueno. And if you pop the question to me, do you drive me insane? Que bueno, si, si, when you want a kiss. I may say no, no. If it makes you low. And I kiss you till your heart's so happy you could cry. Que, 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 I do it. And if you pop the question to me, do you drive me insane? Que bueno. Ay, que lindo. Que bueno. We have a special guest for them. If you want to see somebody drive a car the way I do, and he gets paid for it, go out to the speedway tomorrow and watch those midget cars. And here's the daredevil that you read about on the sports pages, the fellow that drives them, Billy Coy. Hiya, Speedy.
What are you going to do in the race tomorrow? Well, I'm going to do my best, and uh, if I have to, why, I'll drive right over. Oh, that's wonderful. That's a tip for all you race fans. Say, Carlos, have you got that can of buckshot ready? Hey, senorita. Well, let's shake it. I'd like to find you a wee drink for me. The best. McGregor's Heather Jew. You don't even have to drink it. You just take the cork and inhale it. Well, uh, let me buy you folks a drink. Waiter, uh, what do you have? Campaign with bubbles in it. What? And put a shot of gin in them to make it bounce. Yeah. Oh. More laps and I'll have it right under control. Take it easy, Billy. You're not driving a hot rod, you know. <laughs> Come gives a bad name oh, to the whole sport. All right. Do you want to drive fast? Save it for the speedway. So you want my bail. Do I have to listen to your lecture all night? And another thing. I don't think you should drive tonight. You're in no shape for it. Oh, what do you mean? I'm as steady as a rock. Oh. Hey. Hey, Billy. Hi, Abby. Where have you been? In jail, Dick, and in jail. Come on, let's get the limousine out on the track. I'll see you at the finish line. <laughs> Well, come on, come on, let's go, Deacon. Let's get it on the way. Come on, mechanical brain. We're in the middle of the race. Let's go. Come the mighty midgets, ladies and gentlemen, into the west turn now. This is the main event, the big race of the night. It'll be for 40 laps. On the pole in the first line is Fred Nichols. On the outside of the first line is Georgie Whitehead. Moving to the second row on the pole, it's Tim Hawkins. <laughs> on the outside of the board. Hey, Billy! Good luck, kid! Same to you, Happy! Your car number 75, we have Happy Lee. So we're getting ready for a start now. And as soon as the green flag comes down, these drivers will be on their way for 40 laps of the main event. He's looking them over. Here they come in, speeding the flag over there. The the Thank you. 
I tried to pull him out. Sure. He was my, my best friend. Yeah, I know. Let you know that. Happy was my best friend. Why did somebody say something? All right, come on, somebody say something. Hear it, do you? Okay, I'll give it to you straight from the gearbox. A lot of us here make our living driving race cars. Most of us try to stay alive when we get out on that track. It's a tough enough racket without asking for trouble. So then a punk comes along who says he's gonna drive right over us. The only reason we don't smack him down right away is because we figure he don't mean it. We figure he's just flapping his big mouth. But you did mean it, didn't you, knothead? A guy got killed because you tried to beat the yellow flag. You drove right over him, didn't you? It was an accident, Vic. Not an accident, not when you asked for it. When you asked for it, it's murder. My own father got killed in an accident that way. Let you know that. My own father got killed, didn't he? That's the difference between you and your old men. When you got drunk last night, another driver got killed. When Cannonball got drunk, he only killed himself. What are you trying to hand me? About you being drunk last night? That's no secret. You were loaded. I was not. What's this about my father? Cannonball? He was a lush. Everybody knows that. That's a sticking lie. Why don't you stop kidding yourself? Your old man was a souse and a chaser. You ask anybody. Ask Red. He finally had one dame and one bottle too many, and he got his neck broken. That's a sticking lie! Go! <laughs> Come on, bring it up! Hello? 
What was my father the night before his last race? I don't know. He didn't come home. Was he drunk? Oh, he was in no condition to drive. Red begged him not to. Red rode with him. Yes, to protect him. What happened, Mom? Well, I was watching them from the grandstand. Toward the last, I began to hope that they'd make it. That was the worst part of it, hoping again, because as soon as I did, he went straight into the wall. When I got to him, he was dead. Then he was drunk. Oh, he was always irresponsible. And he chased after women, too? I suppose so. Oh, Mama. How could he do that to you? I always thought he was such a great guy. I always wanted to be just like him. Don't, Billy. Don't cry, Mom. <laughs> Don't cry. Somehow I'll... <laughs> Don't cry. Here, I had to take one of these. Thanks, Red. What are you doing here? Well, Red, I came back to ask you if I could have my old job back. Go for it. Well, I, I'd, I'd like to drive number six, Red. Huh? I'd like to take her out right now and get used to it, you know? I'll, I'll train for Indianapolis just like a fighter would train for a fight. Red, I want to know uh, that motor, you know, just like a book. I want to see what she'll do in the turns. And... I'm sorry, kid. You mean you can't use me, Red? I can't afford you. Oh, you don't have to pay me anything. Pay me what you like. No dice. Thanks, anyway. Hey, I've just been looking for you. Yeah? Red's rebuilding number 50. So what? Well, it'll take him two or three weeks, so I'd go out and get myself another ride if I were you. Does that mean I'm all washed up with you? You know what you cost me yesterday? 6,000 bucks. So what? Uh, you risk your dough, I risk my neck at 60-40. Well, you don't need to risk your neck anymore. Not on my account. How about that estimate, Red? flag around here. Yeah? I think I tried to hit him on purpose. Uh-huh. What do they think I like putting the wheel through the wall? Look, I got work to do. Go tell your troubles to somebody else, will you? Murderer? Do you have any socks that need mending? Here's a pair that could do with a little attention. 
there anything you want to talk about? Yeah. Take these downstairs. Mom? Yes, sir. Yes? Nobody wants me anymore. Oh, Billy. Oh. I wouldn't say that, dear. I asked every owner over at the track. They were all after me last month. Now nobody wants me. Why don't you give it up, dear? Everybody has to stop racing sooner or later. Maybe this is the time for you to quit. I can't quit, Mom. I can't quit while I'm a failure. But a man can fail at one thing and be a success at something else. I can't. Driving's what I do best. If I fail now, it means I'll fail at everything I do all my life. Billy, did you ever stop to really think how I must feel when you're out at the racetrack? Every time your father drove, I had to sit in the grandstand and pray that he'd still be alive when the race was over. Every lap he drove, I died a little. He drove a hundred laps, I died a hundred times. In Indianapolis. And now I'm having to go through the whole thing all over again. Every time you're out on the racetrack, I don't draw a deep breath till you're home again. Every time the telephone rings, it seems to me I can't bear it. Sorry you feel that way, Mom. Oh, give it up, Billy. Give it up before it's too late. I can't, Mom. I'm sorry, but I can't. But you said something that started me thinking. You said a guy could fail at one thing and make good at another. Well, a guy could fail one place and make good someplace else. Yes, dear, that's true. Well, then I don't have to stay around here. Why? Go back east where the big cars are and the big dough. Oh. Oh, Mom, I'll send for you as soon as everything is all right. Don't worry about me, son. Just take care of yourself. Terribly sorry about Happy. You must feel just awful. Thanks for saying that. Nobody else did. I heard Deacon say you weren't going to drive four bits anymore. You want me to talk to my father? Never mind. Once we're driving around here, I'm getting out. Out of racing? Out of California. I'm going back east. Is it because of her? I saw you going to that nightclub last week. Well, if you'd have waited ten minutes, you'd have seen me come right out again. Oh. Just someone to tell my troubles to. Look, Billy, if you need someone to talk to... I can always talk to you, can I? You know you can. I'm gonna level with you. You know that... that cute little hat you wore the other day? Oh, silly thing with the feathers? No, no, it was a swell looking hat. And a swell girl was wearing it, too. But right now, I... I haven't got time for any other kind of gear except this. Then I won't be seeing you anymore? Are you going to be in Indianapolis on Memorial Day? Uh-huh. I'll be there, too. And I'll see you there, won't I? Got a date, Lou. how boys are. He doesn't write much, but he does send me a money order every week with love scrawled across it. <laughs> well, he's doing good now, all right. Won three straight main events. I wish he'd never win a race. 
Then perhaps he'd quit. Oh, now, Mary. Oh, I'm upset, Arthur. I had a bad dream last night. He's driving at Salem tomorrow. I saw him driving straight at a concrete wall, smashed right into it, head on. Then I heard a cry, like a little child crying. That was no hunch, Mary. Those were your fears you were dreaming. Oh, I hate racing. I hate everything about it. Oh, no, no, you don't. You don't hate everything about it. Don't hate me, do you? <laughs> no, I don't hate you, Red. Begging your pardon, Mary. But I love you. I'll take care of you. I'll take good care of you. Take care of Billy, will you, Red? Please take care of him. You got my letter? Yeah, about you uh, marrying Red. Red? Oh, he's such a fine man. Hello, kid. Hi, Red. Hey, look, uh, I hope it's all right with you, me getting married to your mother. Yeah, sure, it's all right with me. What? What's the matter with you two? I thought you liked each other. Yeah, we like each other. Hello, kid. There's one thing I want you to know. The reason why I wouldn't let you drive six is because you were too inexperienced. Yeah, sure. Well, I didn't want you to get your neck broken. Uh-huh. But I never thought you had anything to do with Happy getting killed. You didn't? No. You aren't overdriving the yellow flag. You were just trying to catch up with him to show him he was losing his wheel. That's the way it was, Red. We all know that now. Honest? Sure. You know, I didn't, uh, I didn't write you and Mom much after you got married, did I? No, you didn't. Didn't get to congratulate you, but congratulations now, right? Thanks, kid. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Yes, ladies and gentlemen, another day of qualifying here at world-famous Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And let me tell you, newcomers to the automobile racing game, that these time trials out here in Indianapolis are definitely rough, wild, and certainly dangerous. Now, many of you know what I'm talking about. You've seen the days previous to this day of qualification, when the cars have cracked into the retaining wall, and they've turned over and caught on fire as they pull cars into the infield, with the cars completely out of control. Now again, the time trial situation is at hand. And these cars must travel around the huge and certainly very dangerous two and one half mile oval four times. That's a 10 mile qualification run, and all these drivers are Billy, traveling down Billy. hard, attempting to break every track record. Hi, everybody. See, I'm glad to see you. <laughs> all right, all right, break that up, you guys. Huh? You heard me. Say, what are you doing down here in the pits? You know women aren't allowed down here. Oh, I'm okay with the gang. They won't squeal. Oh. I was hoping you'd be here two weeks ago in time to get a ride. Well, they didn't let me out of the hospital until Wednesday. Would you like me to introduce you to some of the owners? Gee, that'd be swell. Say, by the way, whatever happened to number one? Have you qualified yet? No, we haven't tried yet. You haven't qualified yet? Mm -hmm. Well, oh, Vic and Dad are having some kind of an argument. They're over in the garage now. Well, what are we waiting for? I'm through horsing around, Reno. 40% of the person I walk. You've got no place to walk. You've got no car to ride. It's too late now. Okay, my friend, I'll drive number six for Red Stanley. Can't do that either. He's already got a chauffeur. Uh-uh. He had a chauffeur. Sonny quit last night. Why? Because number six couldn't make 125 miles an hour, and it'll take 125 to qualify. Well, Sonny didn't know how to handle a front-wheel drive. I do. After all, number six has the same power plant as this car. And if I can make it with this one, I can make it with number six. <laughs> so long, Reno. Uh, wait a minute, Vic, you can't do that. Don't be a dummy now. What are you... 
Daddy, you remember Billy Coy, don't you? Yeah, hello, Billy. Billy won the 100 mile three stakes at Dayton last month. He did? And the 50 lap feature at Richmond. No, fool He got second in Oswego in the trophy dash at Williams Grove. What was that, midgets? No, sir, big clocks. Well, you ever handle a front wheel drive, son? Oh, I handled a front wheel uh, off at Dayton. Hey, we might be able to make a deal here. How would you like to drive number one for me in the 500? I, I'd like it just great. Well, Sullivan out of the north turn into the home stretch straight away, driving the Stanley special car number six. Will he take the white flag, signifying one lap remaining to go? Will he take it? Will he take it? He does not take the white flag. He does not take the white flag at all. And that gives Rick Stanley, the owner of the car, a chance to make a few last minute repairs and adjustments and two more chances to qualify the car for the big race. Hi, Reno. What about Red? Well, son, you all ready to blow off those turns this morning? Sure am. I'll keep that throttle right down to the floorboard all the way. No brakes, huh? No brakes. That's what I like about the way you drive, kid. You got initiative. And remember what you used to say out in California. You used to say, I'll drive right over them. Did I? Yeah, I was there the day you drove over Happy Lee. Hey, minute, Reno. Boy, did you jump that yellow flag. I'll bet you beat it 20 yards. I didn't beat any yellow flag. I was trying to catch Happy to tell him he was losing his wheel. Oh, sure. Don't give me none of that old sure business. You talk as if I tried to kill the guy. I didn't say you killed the guy. I said you drove over him. All right, so the boy got killed. This is racing. You gotta take chances. What kind of chances did you ever take, you phony? Looks like I took one chance too many when I hired a fresh kid to drive for me. Looks like you gotta try and find another driver, too, because I'm through, Reno. Why, you dirty little grease monkey. Billy! 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 You're not mad at me, are you? I'm not mad at you, buddy. Then why don't you go back and talk to Red Stanley? He's looking for a driver. What would he be looking for anybody for when he has Vic? Vic couldn't get her up to qualifying speed, so he quit. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we're in the midst of another day of qualifications. And right now, the starter is waving all the drivers off of the track so we can prepare for the next time trial, which will be on the speedway in just a moment. Oh, how are cigarettes? Oh, you can see for yourself. What, 1980? Oh, I don't know. It doesn't seem to have any soup on the turns. Well, I reset the plugs. I changed the adjustment on the carburetor. But I switched the fuel. What's that? That's what? Well, that doesn't look like the same supercharger the Reno had. His was way bigger. Well, Dad had a special job put on. They said it would compensate with higher temperature. Yeah, I thought of that. I tried to get one. Good luck, boss. Sure. Well, come on, let's get started. Get in the car, Vic. All right, Reno, don't blow your gasket. I told you I'd drive it, and I will. We got ten minutes to qualify. Come on, start the motor. Contact. Well, come on. It won't start. What do you mean it won't start? We'll get under the hood, check the plug. Come on, do something. Come on, get in there. How's it going to start? There's no blower. What do you mean, oh, no oh. blower? I put it on myself. Look, Reno, if you're trying to get cute with me, I'm going to bust you wide open. Me get cute with you? You bring back that supercharger or I'll have you fired for life. He can't bring it back. What do you mean he can't bring it back? Because he doesn't know where it is. Do you know where it is? Sure, it's on number six. Red took it. I'll have him arrested. Get a cop. Get Red it. didn't take it. I gave it to him. You gave it to him? Why? Because there wasn't another one in Indianapolis and I wanted Billy to have a chance. So you gave him my supercharger? No, I gave him my supercharger. It's my car, isn't it? Oh. Now on the speedway for the third and final trial, the Stanley Special, car number six, uh -huh. driven by Billy Coy. That's all. I warned you about having those kind of children, remember? If I...
7.40 miles per hour on the first lap, on the second lap, 126.45, and then on that third lap, 115.40. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't understand what could have happened, because on the fourth lap, Billy Coy turned at 126.20. It's a tough break indeed. Sorry, Rex. Oh, I guess old number six just hasn't got it. The time is 6 o'clock. The qualifying for the big race is finished. Oh, well, that's that. Car 92, Al Harmon driving, will be the final 33rd car in the race. He qualified at a speed of 125.46 miles an hour. Vic Sullivan, car number one, failed to qualify because of mechanical trouble. Mechanical nothing due to robbery, due to thieves. I'll have you arrested. Ah, oh, get lost. And I'll sue you for damages, but you haven't got anything. You won't even have a garage when I get through with you. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about my supercharger. You took it. No, sir, it was a spare. I'm out of the race. Attention, please. Attention, please. Always. A correction. A correction on Billy Coy's time. Car number six. Coy's official time, ladies and gentlemen, is faster than that of Al Harmon. Because of a blot on the electric timer, the error was made. So Billy Coy qualifies for the big race. Oh, you're amazing. Oh, wonderful driving. You made it. I'm fine. I've made it. You stole my supercharger. Well, I... Oh. <laughs> running of the 500-mile national championship automobile race here in Indianapolis, Indiana. This is an international event. Yes, people from all over the world have been here for days. The hotels are completely sold out. It certainly is a wonderful sight to see all of these people coming from every state in the Union out here to see the greatest automobile race of all time. Vintage cars now parading down the home stretch and believe it or not, under their own power, make some models of days gone by with driver and companion attired in early 1900 clothes. While down on the pits, all 33 starting cars are being checked over for minor mechanical trouble by the mechanics, the car owners, and the remainder of the pit crews, too. Anything in the way of mechanical difficulty, you know, can keep a car from starting the big race. Right now, the cars are going to be shoved under the speedway next to the pit wall, and the car owners giving their drivers last minute instructions. <laughs> Red, is there anything else you want to tell me? Yeah. This is a long grind, kid, so don't try to win it in the first hundred miles. Stay in striking distance and be ready to come in. I got you. I figure I'll come in for gas around 275. Yeah, that's right. Now, take a look at the north turn. See that crosswind? Yeah. Doesn't look like much from here, but at the end of a long race, it's murder. Go in low and stay in the groove. I, I hope I got you, Red. 
Well, that's all, I guess. Good luck, kid. Thanks, Fred. Good luck, Bill. Thanks, George. Good luck, Billy. I sure hope you win. Right, Lou. Get your mind on the race, lover boy. But don't worry about me. Attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. The big moment is about to take place. The big 500-mile Decoration Day race is about to begin. The cars are on the speedway. The pace car directly in front of the first three lead cars. The pace car driven by the president of Indianapolis Speedway, Wilbur Shaw. The lead cars on the pole, Duke Nalon. In the center of the first row, Rex Mays. And on the outside is Jack McGrath, the three lead cars.
Boy! In my supercharger. That's what I can't understand. Oh, Father, do you have to win all the races all the time? Yes. Well, you won't win this one. Come on, Billy! They're nearing the halfway point. Dale and Spalding 
game, a very close call indeed. Stretch. We're watching Billy Coy as he has moved into fourth position, and he's challenging for the lead. Bill Holland is still in first. Jack McGrath is moving up very fast in Bill Holland. But here comes Billy Coy. Here he comes very fast on the outside now of Ted Frankie in car number one. And he's on his way down to left car number 36. The car is one left behind Billy Coy. Billy Coy is in third. McGrath in second. He's a great driver, ain't he? That's my son. You mean your Jack McGrath's mother? No, the other one, Billy Coy. Coy? Come on, you Coy! Come on, on you Coy! This is one of the most sensational races I've ever seen in my life, ladies and gentlemen. There goes Billy Coy. He is moved by the second place car, McGrath, and he is now in second place all by himself, which means he's going to have to be for first place. What a sensational driver! Cannonball Coy! As great as his father was... Right. Oh. We'll rebuild and try again next year. Yeah, with whose dough? Came in third. 
look at those cars that pass me. All but two are in another lap. Sir. Yes. That gives us enough to build any car we want. Come on, now, let's get your arms fixed. And now, moving into the three lane, is Bill Holland, car number seven, the Blue Crown, a runner-up for two years in a row, and this year, 1949, it's Bill Holland year. Evie, now don't worry. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Bill Holland has made one of those wonderful sporting gestures that make automobile racing the sport that it really is. He will not receive the famous Borg Warner Trophy, the cup that has always been presented to the winner of this race, but he insists that the officials award custody of the Borg Warner Trophy to a driver who did not win the race, but who won the hearts of the whole racing world with his skill, his daring, and his great courage. We present the trophy to Billy Cannonball Coyne.